Section 29 of Anecdotes of Dogs. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Julia Kelly. Anecdotes of Dogs by Edward Jesse. The Mastiff. Great Britain was so noted for its mastiffs that the Roman emperors appointed an officer in this island with the title Procurator Cunegi, whose sole business was to breed and transmit from hence to the amphitheatre such as would prove equal to the combats of the place. Magnaque Tarorum Factudi Cola Britanni this noble dog which like the bulldog is supposed to be an original breed peculiar to this country is now seldom to be met with in its pure state it having been crossed and recrossed with other dogs perhaps the finest specimen now to be found is one at chatsworth where also is to be seen a noble alpine mastiff it is a dog of gigantic size of a yellowish color with a black muzzle there is also another at Elveston Castle in Derbyshire, not so large as the one at Chatsworth, but apparently of the true breed, and for which we believe Lord Harrington gave the sum of fifty guineas. These dogs are brave, faithful to their trust in an extraordinary degree, and have a noble disposition. Their strength also is very great, and their bark deep and loud, sir walter scott's remarks on the character of the dog may be well applied to the mastiff the almighty who gave the dog to be the companion of our pleasure and our toils hath invested him with a nature noble and incapable of deceit he forgets neither friend nor foe remembers and with accuracy both benefit and injury he hath a share of man's intelligence but no share of man's falsehood. You may bribe a soldier to slay a man with his sword, or a witness to take life by false accusation, but you cannot make a dog tear his benefactor. He is the friend of man, save when man justly incurs his enmity. The mastiff, indeed, usually shows a remarkable and peculiar warmth in his attachments and on the other hand he will evince his dislike in the strongest manner. It has been observed of him that if he is once severely corrected or insulted, it is almost impossible to eradicate the feeling from his memory, and it is no less difficult to attain a reconciliation with him. He seems conscious of his own strength, power, and authority, and will seldom condescend to lower his dignity by servile fawning while he appears to consider his services as only befitting a trust of the highest importance he is naturally possessed of strong instinctive sensibility speedily obtains a knowledge of all the duties required of him and discharges them with the most punctual assiduity his vigilance is very striking he makes regular rounds of the premises committed to his care examines every part of them and sees that everything is in a state of perfect security during the night he will give a signal of his presence by repeated barkings which are increased upon the least cause of alarm unlike the bulldog the mastiff always warns before he attacks his voice is deep and powerful in tone such is the animal of which i now propose to give a few characteristic anecdotes about the year 1742, a lady who resided in a lone house in Cheshire permitted all her servants except one female to go to a supper and dance at a Christmas merry meeting held at an inn about three miles distant and kept by the uncle of the maid who had remained in the house with her mistress. The servants were not expected back till the morning. Consequently, the doors and windows were, as usual, secured and the lady and her servant were going to bed, when they were alarmed by the voice of some persons apparently attempting to break into the house. 
fortunately a great mastiff dog named caesar was in the kitchen and set up a tremendous barking which however had not the effect of intimidating the robbers the maid-servant distinctly heard that the attempt to enter the house was made by the villains endeavoring to force a way through a hole under the sunk story in the adjoining back kitchen or scullery being a young woman of courage she went towards the spot accompanied by the dog and patting him on the back exclaimed at him caesar the dog made a furious attack on the person who seemed to be at the hole and gave something a violent shake when all became quiet and the animal returned to her with his mouth all besmeared with blood she afterwards heard some little bustle outside of the house which soon was stilled the lady and servant sat up until morning without farther molestation when on going into the court a quantity of blood was found on the outside of the wall the other servants on their return brought word to the maid that her uncle the innkeeper had died suddenly during the course of the night they understood of a fit of apoplexy and was intended to be buried that day the maid got leave to go to the funeral and was surprised to find the coffin on her arrival screwed down she insisted on taking a last view of the body which was most unwillingly granted when to her great surprise and horror she found his death had been occasioned from his throat being torn open what had happened the evening before immediately rushed to her imagination and it appeared too evident to her that she had been the innocent cause of her uncle's death and upon further inquiry it was proved that he and one of his servants had formed the design of robbing the house and murdering the lady in her unprotected condition during the absence of her servants but by the watchfulness and courage of her dog their design was frustrated an anecdote is related of a mastiff who in the reign of queen elizabeth when lord buckhurst was ambassador at the court of charles the ninth alone and unassisted successively engaged a bear a leopard and a lion and pulled them all down very extraordinary stories have been told of these and some other kinds of dogs discovering and circumventing plans to injure the persons of their masters in which it is difficult to place implicit credit we give one of the most marvellous of these anecdotes as it is usually related sir h lee of ditchley in oxfordshire ancestor of the late earls of lichfield had a mastiff which guarded the house and yard but had never met with any particular attention from his master in short he was not a favourite dog and was retained for his utility only and not from any partial regard one night as sir harry was retiring to his chamber attended by his favourite valet an italian the mastiff silently followed them upstairs which he had never been known to do before and to his master's astonishment presented himself in the bedroom being deemed an intruder he was instantly ordered to be turned out which being complied with the poor animal began scratching violently at the door and howling loudly for admission the servant was sent to drive him away discouragement however could not check his intended labor of love he returned again and was more importunate to be let in than before sir harry weary of opposition though surprised beyond measure at the dog's apparent fondness for the society of a master who had never shown him the least kindness and wishing to retire to rest bade the servant open the door that they might see what he wanted to do this done the mastiff with a wag of the tail and a look of affection at his lord deliberately walked up and crawling under the bed laid himself down as if desirous to take up his night's lodging there to save farther trouble and not from any partiality for his company this indulgence was allowed the valet withdrew and all was still about the solemn hour of midnight the chamber door opened 
and a person was heard stepping across the room. Sir Harry started from sleep. The dog sprung from his covert, and seizing the unwelcome disturber, fixed him to the spot. All was dark. Sir Harry rang his bell in great trepidation in order to procure a light. The person who was pinned to the floor by the courageous mastiff roared for assistance. It was found to be the favorite valet, who little expected such a reception. He endeavored to apologize for his intrusion and to make the reasons which induced him to take this step appear plausible. But the importunity of the dog the time, the place, the manner of the valet, raised suspicions in Sir Harry's mind, and he determined to refer the investigation of the business to a magistrate. The perfidious Italian, alternately terrified by the dread of punishment and soothed by the hope of pardon, at length confessed that it was his intention to murder his master and then rob the house. This diabolical design was frustrated solely by the unaccountable sagacity of the dog and his devoted attachment to his master. A full-length picture of Sir Harry, with the mastiff by his side, and the words, more faithful than favored, is still preserved among the family pictures. Presentiments of approaching danger, such as those now related, are to be traced only to the animal's close observation and watchful jealousy of disposition. Looks, signs, and movements are noticed by him which escape an ordinary observer. The idea that dogs have presentiments of death and howl on such occasions is a superstition now all but vanished. In October 1800, a young man going into a place of public entertainment at Paris was told that his dog, a, a fine mastiff, could not be permitted to enter, and he was accordingly left with the guard at the door. The young man was scarcely entered into the lobby when his watch was stolen. He returned to the guard and prayed that his dog might be admitted, as through his means he might discover the thief. The dog was suffered to accompany his master, who intimated to the animal that he had lost something. The dog set out immediately in quest of the strayed article, and fastened on the thief, whose guilt on searching him was made apparent. The fellow had no less than six watches in his pocket, which being laid before the dog, he distinguished his master's, took it up by the string, and bore it to him in safety. At the castle of a nobleman in Bohemia, a large English mastiff was kept that never failed to go every Sunday to the village church. The other dogs in the neighborhood used to follow him thither, so that the church was often full of these animals. This being considered a nuisance, orders were given by the magistrates at one of the petty courts held for regulating the affairs of the village that the inhabitants should be enjoined to keep all their dogs locked up every Sunday during the time of divine service. The magistrate who presided in this court said, in a loud and authoritative tone of voice, I will suffer no dogs in the church. Let me not see one there in the future. The mastiff happened to be lying under the table in the court when these words were spoken, to which he appeared to listen with great attention. On the ensuing Sunday, the dog rose at an early hour, ran from house to house through the village, barking at the windows, and at last took his station before the church door to see whether any of his companions would venture to approach it, notwithstanding the prohibition. Unfortunately, one of them appeared. The mastiff immediately fell upon him with the utmost fury, bit him to death, and dragged him out into the street. He continued in the same manner for several subsequent Sundays to stand sentinel, without ever entering the church. Captain Brown gives an interesting instance of the gentleness of a mastiff towards a child. He says that a large and fierce mastiff, which had broken his chain, ran along a road near Bath, to the great terror and consternation of those whom he passed 
when suddenly running by a most interesting boy, the child struck him with a stick, upon which the dog turned furiously on his infant assailant. The little fellow, so far from being intimidated, ran up to him and flung his arms round the neck of the enraged animal, which instantly became appeased, and in return caressed the child. It is a fact well known that few dogs will bite a child, or even a young puppy. Captain Brown adds that he possesses a mastiff, which will not allow any one of his family to take a bone from him except his youngest child. A chimney sweeper had ordered his dog, a mastiff crossed with a bulldog, to lie down on his soot bag, which he had placed inadvertently almost in the middle of a narrow back street in the town of Southampton. A loaded coal cart passing by, the driver desired the dog to move out of the way. On refusing to do so, he was scolded, then beaten, first gently, and afterwards with a smart application of the cart whip, but all to no purpose. The fellow, with an oath, threatened to drive over the dog, and he did so, the faithful animal endeavoring to arrest the progress of the wheel by biting it. He thus allowed himself to be killed sooner than abandon his trust. A mastiff dog, who owed more to the bounty of a neighbor than to his master, was once locked by mistake in the well-stored pantry of his benefactor for a whole day, where milk, butter, bread, and meat within his reach were in abundance. On the return of the servant to the pantry, seeing the dog come out, and knowing the time he had been confined, she trembled for the devastation which her negligence must have occasioned. But on close examination, it was found that the honest creature had not tasted of anything, although on coming out, he fell on a bone that was given to him with all the voraciousness of hunger. These dogs are alive to injuries, and not slow in resenting them. A carrier had a mastiff remarkable for his sagacity. It happened, unfortunately, one day that one of the wagon horses trod accidentally upon him in the yard. The dog became furious, and would have attacked the horse had he not been prevented. It was usual for the dog to remain with the horses at night in the stable. After the men had retired, the mastiff selected out the animal which had trod upon him, and no doubt would have put an end to his existence had not the carters who were at hand hearing an unusual noise come to his assistance the widow of a farmer had two mastiffs which from their fierceness rendered some precaution necessary in approaching the house their mistress was taken suddenly ill and died and in the afternoon of her death the benevolent wife of the clergyman of the parish call to see if she could render any assistance after knocking in vain at the front door she went to the back of the house with fear and trembling on entering the kitchen to her dismay she saw the two dogs on the hearth they appeared however to be sensible of what had taken place for they only lifted up their heads mournfully looked at the intruder and resumed their former attitude my neighbor, Mr. Penryn, had two noble mastiffs of the lime breed, which I believe is now nearly extinct. It is probably, however, preserved by Thomas Lee Esquire of Lime Park in Cheshire, who has also the wild breed of cattle, now only, I believe, found at Lime Park and at Chillington in Yorkshire, the seat of Lord Tankerville. There is a story current at Lime Park that, some years ago, a dog of the breed in question, whilst walking with the steward in the park, took offense at one of the wild bulls, and would instantly have attacked it, but was with difficulty restrained by the steward. The dog returned home, evidently bearing the offense in mind, and the next morning the steward, seeing him covered with blood, suspected something amiss, and on going into the park, found that not only the bull but two cows had been worried by him. A mastiff belonging to a tanner 
had taken a great dislike to a man, whose business frequently brought him to the house. Being much annoyed at his antipathy, and fearful of the consequences, he requested the owner of the dog to endeavor to remove the dislike of the animal to him. This he promised to do, and brought it about in the following manner, by acting on the noble disposition of the dog. Watching his opportunity, he one day, as if by accident, pushed the dog into a well in the yard, in which he allowed it to struggle a considerable time. When the dog seemed to be getting tired, the tanner desired his companion to pull it out, which he did. The animal, on being extricated, after shaking himself, fawned upon his deliverer, as if sensible that he had saved his life, and never molested him again. On the contrary, he received him with kindness whenever they met, and often accompanied him a mile or two on his way home. A personal friend of the writer's, some time since, on a visit at a gentleman's house in the country, was taking a moonlight walk through the shrubbery and pleasure grounds, when he was startled by a noise behind him. On turning his head, he perceived a large mastiff, which was ordinarily let loose as evening closed, and which had tracked him through the grounds. The dog, with a fierce growl, roughly seized him. Our friend wisely deemed passive obedience and non-resistance the most prudent, if not the most courageous part for him to play, and was unceremoniously led back through the grounds to the hall door. Here he was relieved by the master of the house. Subsequently assured that he had no cause to fear, he repeated his walk. The dog was again at his side, but walked quietly with him, and acknowledged, in the usual way, his words of conciliation. On these instances of sagacity, sagacity of a kind very different from that displayed by the shepherd's dog or the setter, there needs no comment. A gentleman in Ireland had a mastiff which was kept to guard his premises. A small dog, belonging to a poor man who came to the house on business, had barked at and annoyed him, but he was obliged to submit to the insult at the time with sullen patience, as his chain prevented him from taking any immediate revenge. A few evenings afterwards, however, he contrived to escape from the backyard, and immediately made his way to the cabin of the cur's master. Finding the door open, more hibernicorum, he entered without even a premonitory growl. To the dismay of the humble inmates, who were eating their supper of potatoes and milk, seized the offender and killed it. Another mastiff behaved in a very different manner. He had also been annoyed by a little cur as he passed along the streets, which he bore with great patience for a long time. At last his persecutor became so troublesome that he could bear it no longer. He therefore one day caught his contemptible adversary by the neck, carried him to the edge of a wharf, and dropped him gently into the water. The instinctive appreciation of the nature of property, as shown in dogs, is exemplified in the following instance. A lady at Bath, walking out one day, was impeded in her progress by a strange mastiff dog. She became alarmed, and at the same time perceived that she had lost her veil. Upon retracing her steps, the dog went on before her, till the lost article was discovered and as soon as it was picked up, the animal hastened after his own master. End of the Mastiff Recording by Julia Kelly, Knoxville, Tennessee, USA